Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. So Doctor Who is going through a little bit of a renaissance right now, or at least a rejuvenation of sorts. And now that I finally have access to the BBC iPlayer because of a thing that starts with a V and ends with a PN, I've been able to go back and watch a lot more classic Who than I had seen before. And in that, I've specifically been watching a lot of the first Doctor serials. And honestly, both he and that period of Doctor Who at the time is something that I wasn't expecting to like nearly as much as I did, but I found myself kind of obsessed with the first TARDIS crew. While I think, especially in the last couple of years, New Who has really sort of found its way back to Classic Who, has been enjoying cameos from classic companions and references to classic villains. And obviously that had been going on pretty much since the start with Sarah Jane and season two, but they have failed to take what I think is one of the best opportunities possible and something that I'm really just surprised has never happened. Which brings me to the top of this video, Doctor Who's biggest missed opportunity, which is, or should I say who is, Susan Foreman. And so of course, I think at this point we probably all know who Susan is. She's the Doctor's granddaughter and she appears mostly only really in season one and a little bit of season two and then is sent off in one of the weirdest companion exits of all 60 fucking years of the show. But as I've been watching more and more episodes with Susan in them, I've been really taken with the unique way that she functions as a companion. She kind of straddles the roles between companion and doctor, relatable and other, you know, adolescent and alien. And I find from anything in the sort of Doctor Who world that I've seen, we never really have a companion or a character that functions in both of those spaces simultaneously again. Her intelligence far exceeds that of the others, <laughs> and she has knowledge of things known only to the priests. You must be clairvoyant. And on top of just that, on its face. She's such an interesting character and such a great character and she has such a wonderful screen presence and she really sort of falls into probably my favorite type of companion which again is that sort of companion that can balance the relatability and otherworldliness. The two other women who are my two favorite companions where we really see those same sets of traits and that same kind of camaraderie with the doctor are Romana and River. But even when it comes to Romana and River, I find neither of them are nearly as relatable as the character of Susan. And it's really interesting that she can be both and be this very normal teenager while also continuing to have not only that genius intellect, but such a broad awareness of the history of both our world and other worlds. I find that the show holds her opinion and frames her perspective as being important in a sort of new who-like way. It's incredible, isn't it? Beauty and horror developing hand in hand. I'm, I'm sorry for what grandfather said to you. Try and understand him. I've never felt there was any time or place that I belonged to. I've never had any real identity. The camera and the script and just the show itself is empathetic to Susan as a person in a way that I feel like the rest of Classic Who doesn't really do with the companions. Russell certainly started off New Who with Rose as being a show that was equally, if not more, focused on the lives of companions than the life of the Doctor. And I was really surprised then to see how much the first and second season focus on the lives of their companions. As well as the fact that, like, how often in New Who do we even have more than one woman in the TARDIS, especially for like an entire season? Because I know we have Amy and River at different points, and I know for a couple of episodes we had Martha and Donna, and certainly when it comes to Jodie's era, she's a woman and Yaz is a woman. But when else do we have TARDIS crew where there are two women who are able to understand and empathize with one another in the specific way that comes with being the member of the same gender? And I like the fact that Barbara and Susan 
end up being sometimes girly or being silly or whatever with one another because they have those multiple facets to themselves, you know? And I think that's also true of new Who companions. There are things about Rose that can be demure or feminine, and then there are things that are really tough and masculine about her, you know, and that's true of everybody else. And I think just the last note I sort of want to make here is the fact that Susan is a real teenager. We don't have a lot of young people in the TARDIS consistently, and a lot of the time in Classic Who, when we did, they were played by much older <laughs> women, especially like literally the, com the companion that comes after her. I think her name is Vicky. She's supposed to be like 14, and I'm pretty sure the actress was like my age, but I swear to God, when I first saw her, I thought she was like 35. You know, I know we have Adric, but Adric is a whole other story. But when it comes to younger people being in the TARDIS and New Who, they're all at least young adult. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think at this point we've had like a kid in the TARDIS. And Susan functions as a child. You know, she is an adolescent and sometimes her prissiness or selfishness or sort of general like social naivete will end up getting them in really negative situations and she's opinionated and stubborn. I'm not going to be told who to marry. What say have you in the matter? Well, it's my life. I'll spend it with whom I choose, not someone picked up for me. No, you can't do that. I... You're monsters. All of you monsters. That's not what you said just Let's now. Not... She says she can cook. Can what do you do? I eat. But I just love the fact that she's allowed to be flawed and allowed to be young. Hey, look, cartoons. They got bubbles coming out of their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> That's a much larger point that I find very interesting and in a lot of sci-fi and fantasy stuff that has kids in it. And you can go and look at my channel for other videos where I talk much more in depth about that sort of thing. But it was really surprising and almost kind of radical to have Susan be like a normal teenage girl when she's been experiencing all of these otherworldly things, both with her journeys with the doctor before they met Ian and Barbara and, you know, during. New Who has spent so much time looking at family dynamics and placing the doctor within different families, having the doctor create found families, and the way that his, you know, marriage to River makes him literally part of a family for the first time in what's been hundreds and hundreds of years. And so if you're going to add complexities, add emotional complexities to the show by creating these faux family dynamics, why not bring back the literal family? And you know, I mentioned her stupid and petty conclusion, which was just so odd. And I think being able to give both the character Susan some closure and the fan base some closure for something like that would be good as well. I do wonder if her departure is one of the reasons why they didn't bring her back, just because they didn't want to address how weird it was that the doctor just kind of pawns her off and leaves her there. Carol Ann Ford is still alive, and her older companion counterpart came back in Power of the Doctor. And I'm pretty sure that Carol has been and at least something from Big Finish, if not multiple things. I'm gonna bet it's some like Time War thing or whatever. As well as the fact that like, you know, again, I've been talking about the sort of added emotional complexities of New Who. And if you were to bring her back, I would assume you would have to retcon something about her parents. We would all be way too concerned with who the doctor's kids were, how she's actually related, where did they go? And so I wonder if like, anybody on the Doctor Who, you know, writing staff has just been sort of wary of opening up those old wounds and making something that's too lore heavy and dumb, especially now with all the stuff with Shuti that they're sort of really trying to rebrand this as a clean slate. This could potentially be a horrible time to bring back basically the Doctor's first relationship that we ever saw on screen. But at the same time, now there's Ruby. 
I think we're all probably already tired of Ruby's mom is blank theories because obviously the Christmas special is set up for us that this is gonna be a whole thing and we've seen theories from it's Rose to it's Sally Sparrow to it's the Ronnie, it's Ruby herself, etc, etc. I don't even want to put out there that I would even think that Susan is her mom or anything like that, but I will say, obviously they're setting it up to be something. I'm not sure if they're setting it up to be a character that we already know or not, but we've seen the Doctor, at least in New Who, explore a variety of relationship dynamics with different companions, and I feel like 15 already has this very fatherly, almost sort of cool uncle vibe with Ruby. He's been romantic with Rose, he was a friend to, you know, Donna and Amy, He's, there's been sort of a mentor-student relationship with Bill and so I feel like 15 and Ruby's relationship has felt almost the most familial out of anybody thus far and again even if it's not the case that Ruby is somehow related to Susan and thus the doctor there's so many different things that this newest era has been setting up that could be a way to bring Susan back especially when it comes to all of this unit rebranding which I guarantee is going to turn into some sort of spin-off series do we have news about that I'm not sure I should check it out before I release this video but I could certainly see some sort of story where where Susan comes to unit unit tracks down Susan a lot of the time when I make these videos I like to have you know my sort of head cannony parallel world if I was the showrunner what would the plot sort of thing look like but here I really don't I just sort of wanted to talk about how much I love Susan and how interesting of a character she is both in universe and when it comes to the sort of legacy of what a companion means now after we have 60 years of Doctor Who and just how much I would like to see that uniqueness being taken into account when it comes to this really large legacy. And so, you know, I'm not expecting to see Carol Ann Ford grace our screens anytime soon, but if she did, I would be really, really happy. And and in general, I would love to see some more Susan love come from the new Who side of the fandom. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment about anything you'd like to see me talk about in the future. If you're not already subscribed, now's the time to do so. You could maybe even click that little bell, get some notifications every time I post. And with that, I'll see you later.